hey guys uh, today hey guys today i'm back with uh, another video this video is a series of videos uh, based on uh, curved beams uh, this is a chapter in uh, design of machine elements uh, so yeah uh, this is going to be a series of videos as i said before this is the part one where i'll just go to the introduction of uh, curved beams um, in the later videos i will go dive deeper into the subject first of all what is a beam a uh, beam is something which is uh, uh, vertical and uh, sorry which is horizontal and it is subjected to transverse loads that is uh, loads which are acting this way in in case of a column it is a longitudinal load so that is the main difference between a beam and a column a beam is uh, horizontal and it is subjected to transverse loads uh, so in case of curved beams uh, in mechanics of materials uh, we have seen uh, uh, the beams uh, which are uh, not curved which are not curved which are straight and uh, which are subjected to uh, various kinds of uh, loads right um, so we know the SFDs and the BMDs uh, associated with straight beams uh, talking about curved beams and uh, I'll just compare it with straight beams here uh, in straight beams what happens is there is something called as a neutral axis where uh, the stresses are not acting or you can say that the stresses stresses induced in the neutral axis is going to be zero so there is no stress in the neutral axis and there is something also called as a geometrical axis or centroidal axis in straight beams uh, or the beams which are not sub which are straight before uh, the bending moment is applied uh, the neutral axis and the geometrical axis coincide so they both uh, lie in the same line that is one of the uh, main uh, features then the when you apply bending moment the bending moment or the bending stress induced is calculated by the formula uh, we know this formula that is m by i into c where i is the moment of inertia c is the distance from the neutral axis and uh, m is the bending moment applied and this this is like x into c so this is a linear curve so if we see so if we look at the beam from the side, the cross section, this is a cross section, we see that uh, the stress distribution is linear for straight beams. So this, this is for straight beams, the stress distribution is linear, we know that. Uh, we have also studied this in mechanics of materials. So the stress distribution is linear. So when the stress distribution is linear, the stress induced in the innermost fiber is going to be equal to the stress dis stress indu induced in the outermost fiber in magnitude of course they are, they are going to be opposite in sense but uh, they are going to be equal in magnitude and uh, since the be beam is straight and assuming the ideal conditions where there are no cracks or uh, surface uh, irregularities on the beam uh, no stress concentration factors are going to be present so there is no uh, presence of stress raises in uh, straight beams so this is the these are the main characteristics of a straight beam now coming to the curved beams this is our main topic here in curved beams what happens is the geometrical axis and the neutral axis do not coincide you can see that the top axis is the geometrical axis and the axis below that is the neutral axis uh, generally the neutral axis is towards the radius of curvature that is it is going to be below the ge geometrical axis and it is to closer to the radius of curve uh, co closer to the uh, curvature and uh, uh, I'll just explain the terms here Rn is the radius of uh, uh, curvature of the neutral axis and this R is the radius of geometrical axis E what is E? E is eccentricity eccentricity is the radial difference between the radius of uh, geometrical axis and the radius of uh, neutral axis so that difference is going to be E now coming to the salient features uh, as I said before, neutral axis and the geometrical axis do not coincide and uh, neutral axis is generally towards the uh, curvature, radius of curvature and uh, coming to the stress induced, the bending stress is induced here, uh, the, in here we saw that this is m, I, m by i into c so if we apply this equation for curved beams the uh, what do you say the values that you get are going to be inaccurate because uh, there are a lot of other factors that come into it uh, the main factor is that the 
uh, what is this? The stress distribution is not going to be linear in case of curved beams when the bending moment is applied. So this is this beam is curved before the bending moment is applied. So, uh, so the after you apply the bending moment, uh, the stress uh, stress distribution is going to be this way. So stress distribution is going to pass through the neutral axis here. N. This is the neutral axis. This is the geometrical axis, and this curve is an hyperbolic curve. So for curved beams, uh, under the action of uh, bending moment, uh, it, when it is subjected to a bending moment, the curve or the stress distribution is going to be a hyperbolic curve. It is not going to be linear. Uh, since it is a hyperbolic curve, the uh, stress is induced that the innermost fibers and the outermost fibers are not going to be equal. So that is one of the features. And the bending stress is given by this formula that is M divided by A is the area of cross section into uh, eccentricity divided by y plus rn plus y here uh, rn is nothing but the radius of the neutral axis and y uh, what is y y is the distance from distance of the neutral axis so uh, since here there are two two y's that is uh, distance of neutral axis from the outermost fiber and distance of neutral axis from the innermost fiber so uh, we need to combine those two and get a single value for of y uh, I'll explain uh, how to do that or I'll derive that equation in my next video. Uh, this is uh, this is an uh, equation which is derived by uh, two scientists. I will tell that in my, in my next video. I'll go deep into it in my next video. Just know the difference. Uh, here uh, the bending stress is given by M by I into C. Here is given by this equation. And, uh, and yeah, since the beam is curved, the stress concentration factor is going to be present so he, here there is no curve, curvature in the beam so there is no stress, stress, stress concentra concentration factor here there is going to be a presence of stress concentration factor um, since there is a stress con uh, concentration factor or st presence of stress raisers uh, larger stress are induced towards the uh, center of curvature that is when you go towards this side, the stress, going to, stress is going to be increased. So sigma i is going to be sigma uh, is greater than sigma o dash. Uh, and yeah, so that's it, guys. Uh, for this introduction video of curved beams, uh, just to uh, brush up, uh, the main factors is that uh, the gen uh, centroidal axis or the geometric axis. You can call it centroidal axis or the geometric axis. The main features is the these two do not coincide. That is uh, GA and NA do not coincide, and the uh, bending stress induced equation is going to be different, and uh, stress distribution is going to be hyperbolic, and um, the stresses at the extreme fibers are not going to be equal, and there is presence of stress concentration factor. So these are the salient features of uh, curved beams. So in my next video, I will derive this equation and uh, I'll explain how to come up with those terms and all that. Uh, that's it guys. Thank you.